I would love to know who at Theodora is in charge of the lace department because this is absolutely ridiculous. There is no need for three mile long laces. Like, who does this? What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on the video of the brand new Diodora, wait for this name, MW Blue Shield RBBSH12. I don't know what MW stands for. Blue Shield is a technology that's not well explained in the tech specs of this boot. RB I assume stands for Roberto Baggio. BSH, no clue what that stands for. And 12 refers to the 12 studs on the bottom of the firm ground stud pattern. Complicated name, even more complicated shoe that I would say is a bit of a fail. And the main reason for that is look at the upper. What would you guess that is? You probably didn't guess kangaroo leather, but that's what it is. At least at some point somewhere on this upper, there is kangaroo leather according to the Diodora tech specs, but you would never know based on how they look or feel, which is a pretty major fail in itself. There's some significant quality issues with this particular shoe and really the design as a whole, I would say is fairly questionable. So we're gonna go over all of those details. I'll explain everything in the video, including how they fit and feel on feet. So if you wanna learn more about what we'll refer to as the Diodora Blue Shield for the rest of this video, please stick around. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $170 retail price. You can actually get them right now for about 140 bucks. Again, first link down below. Let's start with the upper because it truly did shock me. Now, this is a material that when I first held the shoe in my hands, really not knowing anything about it other than the fact that it was called the Diodora Blue Shield, I automatically assumed that this was a synthetic upper. It feels like synthetic, it has a plasticky sensation, a rigidness that you would expect from a subpar synthetic upper. And when I put the shoes on feet and tried them out, I got that exact same feel. No real softness. The upper has decent flexibility to it, but for the most part, it reminded me a lot of the Adidas Ace 15.1 synthetic upper, but just more plasticky and not quite as nice. I really kind of evaluated this as a subpar synthetic upper. Not that great from Diodora. We've seen better stuff from them in the form of synthetics with the DDNA line. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. Then I read the tech specs and it blew my mind that this is supposed to be a kangaroo leather upper. And I don't think it's a mistake because that's what's officially written on Diodora's website in multiple different regions. So I don't think that it is a mistake. I think this is in fact kangaroo leather somehow. I don't know how because this does not feel like leather in any way at all. You would never guess in a million years that this was a leather shoe if I had you try these out. Um, it's really, really surprising. So what's listed in the tech specs is that the shoe is a kangaroo leather base with their new touch and feel plus 3D texturing on the surface. So that is what you have in the form of these little triangular textured areas running across the entire upper. And really it has kind of a plasticky surface to it. It doesn't feel particularly premium at all. And there really is no softness to it. This is not like embossed leather. It just feels like, like, can you hear that? That, that doesn't sound like leather. Leather shouldn't really make a noise. It would have kind of a, a pillowy softness to it. This has none of that inside or outside. So again, the fact that this is supposed to be kangaroo leather at the base absolutely shocks me because it does not feel anything like leather whatsoever. Now, what's interesting though, now that I knew that information, is the heel area does have what appears to be some kind of a premium leather material, and it does look to be a natural leather as well. So maybe it is possible there is leather somewhere underneath this particular shoe as a base, but because the rest of it, whatever they put on top feels so bad, it just completely ruins the experience if there is good quality leather there. So if you're hoping for a good leather Diodora experience, having read the tech specs, that is not what you're getting here at all. You're getting a subpar feeling synthetic upper that honestly I wouldn't really recommend. Then you have the lacing setup, which obviously the laces run directly through the middle, a little bit higher up, but they did the lacing system in the worst way possible in my opinion, and that is by way of internal lace loops. Now, because of this system, what has to happen is you have a wrap on the edge at the surface and you have a wrap at the edge on the inside material as well, which creates several layers of material and really just a really bulky edge 
along this line where the lacing system starts. And because this is an area of the foot, really both sides here, where you're gonna be making a lot of contact with the ball, you have a lot of extra ball, if you have hard spots on the upper, and it just doesn't feel good, it doesn't look good, I really don't understand the reasoning for doing this. Yes, you're tucking the laces, underneath the surface of the upper, but you're also creating a big bulge, which is what it's tucking underneath. So it, it just doesn't make really any sense at all. It's a very poor design in my opinion, and I absolutely do not like this whatsoever. As far as the tongue is concerned, it is kind of a one piece enclosure. So you can see it does kind of connect from the heel liner area. So in that regard, it does remind me a little bit of the design that we saw on the original X15.1 from Adidas, but it's made from a much cheaper material, I would say. It is kind of elasticated, almost spongy type synthetic, um, or spongy type mesh, I would say. And then the tongue area, the part through the middle, has this super, super thick, kind of soft sponge material inside. I'm sure it's some kind of a memory foam, but it feels like a dish sponge or something like that. It's just so thick and it runs all the way through. It's great in terms of lace bite and general comfort, but again, in regards to touch on the ball, it just feels really, really weird. You have this super soft spongy material through the middle, these hard bulky edges, and then a synthetic upper or a kangaroo leather upper, I should say, that just doesn't feel very good at all. So the overall package, just not a huge fan of it. And then as far as the cut is concerned, it is a standard low cut, I would say. It's got these little extension pieces, but honestly, it's nothing special there in regards to how the shoes feel. Uh, then the liner, which is made from this really cheap feeling soft, I don't even know what you would describe this as. It's something that you would typically find on like really young kid shoes, that super soft material that's typically found on very low end products, like $20 soccer cleats, but they somehow have it here on a $170 product. And the way that they've actually constructed the inside of the shoe, this may be a little bit more difficult for me to show you guys. Look at this seam. It's just completely open. It's not stitched properly. There's a lot of excess material. And you can see this guy, somebody looks like they, they took some scissors and a blindfold to create this edge right here. It's just really, really bad for a product that granted, it's not $300 like Nike charges for them of their, some of their products, but the quality is just bad. Like you shouldn't be able to pull away the actual, some, the, the liner like this. It's just really, really cheap considering that this is a top end product. The retail is $170, not expensive by top end model standards, but still that's a lot of money to spend on a single pair of shoes. So for the quality to be that bad, it's just really, really surprising because Diodora is a brand that is capable of making some excellent products. Look at the Made in Italy Diodora Brazil OG. That, in my opinion, is one of the best quality leather boots that you can buy right now, but then they put out products like the Diodora Blue Shield, and it really, really makes you question them as a brand. On to the Blue Shield part, which you can see the branding right there on the side. It's very, very unclear in the tech specs what exactly Blue Shield is, but I'm pretty confident in saying that it's the insole. And you're gonna see the sole plate right here has this little window here at the heel where it reveals some gel material. And when you remove the insole, you get to see all of the Blue Shield technology, which is basically just a gel insole or an insole with gel inserts, one at the heel and then one at the forefoot. And this does make a difference in terms of underfoot cushioning and general comfort, I would say. It feels pretty good, I'll admit that. But do I think a gel insole is particularly innovative? No, not necessarily. You can kind of go to your local shoe store and buy a gel insole if that's something you really wanted. Obviously this one is purpose built to fit in this shoe properly, which it does. But it's something that honestly, I just don't really care all that much for. If underfoot cushioning is something that you really value, this does provide more of that than the average soccer cleat. But because the rest of the shoe is just so bad, the one good thing doesn't necessarily make it worth it in my opinion. And of course the rest of the insole is pretty standard. It's got a padded mesh liner on top and it's just a single layer of this blue foam. Nothing too fancy at all. And then as far as the rest of the shoe is concerned, it's a pretty standard plastic sole plate. It's got really, really good flexibility to it. So I'll give them that. And you'll notice that it does have a fairly unusually wide midfoot area, which some people may like if you do have wider feet. Although even if you do have wider feet, I still wouldn't necessarily recommend these. Um, and uh, as far as the stud pattern is concerned, it's a standard layout, but I do like what they did in regards to the studs. You can see that some of them are conical in shape, but then some of them are conical with this extra kind of triangular piece, or I guess three-sided shape that kind of goes on top and almost makes it into a bladed stud. It's a really, really cool design. I like the way that it feels. Uh, and I think it's a really, really interesting way of doing things. It's a, 
Uh, it's raised a little bit up from the conical stud. You can see it just in certain parts of the stud pattern itself. And to me, that's my personal favorite element of this particular shoe. Unfortunately, the rest just isn't that great. As far as overall traction is concerned, it's good. It gets the job done. It's nothing too innovative as far as the layout is concerned. So it's not surprising that it works quite well. But overall, as a package, it's just not a shoe that I'm impressed with at all. The final performance characteristic to discuss here is the weight of the shoe, where again, I'm not sure what Diodora is doing here. What's their concept behind this boot? Because if you ask me, they've kind of gone for that speed boot vibe. Obviously it looks like a synthetic upper, it's technically kangaroo leather. So leather generally will weigh a little bit more than synthetic, but in a size nine US, these guys weigh in at 10.8 ounces, almost at the 11 ounce mark, which is truly unacceptable for a modern day soccer cleat. Everybody wants something that is nine ounces or less. So to create a shoe that weighs more than a Copa Mundial in the same size is just absolutely ridiculous. And really, it gives the shoe almost no chance to gain any kind of popularity. I just don't see what Diodora is doing here. We can't not talk about the way this shoe looks because in person, I have to say, it looks way worse than I was expecting it to. I saw some pictures online where it actually made them look kind of cool. I was a little bit of a fan of this Diodora logo towards the heel, but in the pictures, it almost looks like this was a plastic heel counter, but in person, it's just a glossy synthetic material that looks incredibly cheap. You've got the Diodora Blue Shield branding right there, the Roberto Baggio signature right there, which again, it's really interesting that they're using Baggio as a guy to I guess, advertise a modern soccer cleat. They're trying to say that he had some kind of influence on the shoe, which I hope he didn't, because if he did, man, he knows nothing about soccer cleats and they shouldn't let him design anything. But they also re-released kind of some of his older classic models that I'm sure are very, very good. Something along the lines of the Diodora Brazil OG. This, however, is just questionable in pretty much every angle. The Diodora logo right here, I don't think that necessarily looks bad, but the texturing on the surface looks really cheap. This synthetic doesn't look great. Then you have premium leather on the heel, which makes no sense. This material is already yellowing, which just doesn't look very good at all. This looks really cheap to me, and I just don't like the design of the lacing system. And the sole plate actually does look okay, but again, it doesn't save the whole package. It's just not a good looking shoe. I think most of you guys would agree with me. So feel free to share, share your comments and opinions on this shoe down below in the comment section, because I'd be really curious to hear if you do like the way these look, what about them do you like? Because I, I don't see much about this shoe that's particularly attractive. All right, so as you can see, I swapped out the three mile long stock Diodora laces for some junior length red reflective SR4U replacement laces, which the junior length ones are pretty much the perfect length for what is a pretty shallow lacing system. And the red looks cool with the red accents on the shoes. Anyways, if you are interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, the Diodora Blue Shield feels okay. There's nothing about it that is bad by any means. It's just that the material of the upper, supposedly kangaroo leather, doesn't feel very soft. It kind of has a plasticky sensation to it. And I would say that the fit of the shoe is a little bit higher volume than I would like it to be, which is more a personal preference thing and dependent on the shape of your foot rather than a major complaint. But I would say it's a higher volume fit in general, both in terms of height, as well as in terms of overall width. So if you have really wide feet, Diodora as a brand in general is better suited towards wider foot types, I would say. But again, I'm just not crazy about the way this upper feels in general, either out of the box or even after break-in time. I just think you can get a much better feel from this style of upper from other shoes out there currently available that are gonna be the same price, if not even cheaper. Plus I just don't like the design of the lacing system, the way the tongue works. There's just a lot about it that I'm not crazy about. The heel liner, while very comfortable, is a little bit slippery against your socks. So if you do wear your shoes with a little bit of extra room, you may run into some issues with heel slippage. And as far as that gel cushioning is concerned, the Blue Shield material, underneath the insole, it's not as noticeable as you think it would be based on how significant it looks. Uh, you definitely do notice some of it in the heel, but the forefoot padding honestly is not all that noticeable at all. As far as width is concerned, again, they're gonna be suitable for 
wider foot types in general. If you have really narrow feet, it's not to say that these wouldn't fit you, but they probably wouldn't necessarily be the best fit overall. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that's the Diodora Blue Shield, a model that honestly I wouldn't really recommend for any reason at all. If you can get them for 40 bucks and you want to try a weird pair of boots, maybe it's worth a go. But otherwise, this is a shoe that I would just stay away from. Diodora as a brand is one that I definitely do respect. They've had some excellent leather products over the years. This is not one of them though. Definitely would avoid the Blue Shield. <laughs> Again, if you are interested in a pair of these for whatever reason, you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you will find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. You'll be able to pick these up below their normal $170 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave it down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.